Have you ever had a good idea? Try to do something about it, and you end up feeling a little like this. I'd like to talk to you today about how to build momentum for great ideas. Ideas are like snowflakes, fragile, unique, pretty. Ideas are like snowflakes. I'd like you to imagine that you are standing atop a steep hill. You're looking down at a little village, a few hundred homes. It's winter. It's cold. There is no internet. <laughs> a light flurry starts. Ideas are like snowflakes, and one of them falls from the sky and lands on your shoulder. Now you could choose to brush it off and move on with your day, or you could take that idea from your shoulder, lean down and take some more ideas from the ground and put them all together and make a snowball. Now, everybody who's watched cartoons knows that the right thing to do with a snowball on top of a steep hill with a small village at the bottom of it <laughs> is to roll that snowball down the hill and watch it grow in size and gain momentum and plow right through the city. This is a photo of my father's village. It's in northern Greece, not a very wealthy village, mostly farmers, agriculture. And in this village, my father and his childhood friends did just that. They built a huge snowball and they rolled it through town. Now, it didn't play out exactly like the cartoon. It was a little different for them. His brother first started to push it, and once it got about knee high, my father came along and helped. And as the ball got bigger and bigger, more and more children came to help keep pushing the ball. And as it went through the streets, it would pick up debris, farm equipment, <laughs> livestock, I don't know. And as it got to the center of town, these little kids pushed this ball to the center of town. My father said it was this big. Now, he was probably only this big at the time, but still, he said it was this big. And the corroborating evidence that my grandfather offers is that the debris from that snowball was in the town center for months after the winter was over. Fast forward about 25 years. My father now lives in New York City, and he's pushing a snowball of a different kind. He's running a construction company. At first, they got some odds and ends, a little bit of work here, a little bit of work there, cabinets, demolitions. But it's grown. This snowball has grown, and it's tremendous. It's a highly prestigious design build firm. They're renovating apartments of athletes, actors, tycoons. And my family takes a lot of pride in this work. It, 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 it makes us who we are. But my father has a major challenge. He is the driving force behind keeping this ball rolling. And if he was to stop, it would all come to a halt. If he was to stop, the momentum would dwindle and the company would die. I've faced this challenge in some of my endeavors. I'm sure all of you have faced this challenge as project managers, as executives, as entrepreneurs. So I went on a quest and I said, what is this momentum? That if our ideas have, it's effortless progress. But if our ideas lack, it's grueling grunt work. We use the word a lot. We use it in politics. Somebody's campaign can gain momentum. We use it in business. We use it in sports. But nobody defines this word, except for the physicists. For those of you who speak physics, this says momentum equals mass times velocity. And you'll notice two little arrows which indicate direction. Now, I'm going to try my best to give the world's briefest physics lesson because I'm not a physicist. We did this work in collaboration with a physicist, Dr. Don Drost from the University of Virgin Islands, and Dr. John Cabra, an organizational psychologist. Mass, like a tennis ball. Here, we have a tennis ball that weighs about half a kilogram. A vehicle weighs about 1,000 kilograms. A cruise ship is 225 million kilograms. Now, we're just talking about size here. But these things are also moving. That tennis ball is moving at 70 meters per second. That's roughly 160 miles an hour. Pretty fast, right? That car is moving at 30 meters per second, just above the speed limit. 
And this cruise ship, 11 meters per second, about 25 miles an hour. Don't forget direction. That ball is coming right at you. That car is heading west, and this cruise ship it has a heading of 217 degrees. Mass, speed, and direction make up momentum. That tennis ball's momentum is 35 kilogram meters per second right at you. Would you rather get hit by that or this car with a momentum of 30,000 kilogram meters per second? And if your idea could have one momentum or the other, which, op which one do you think would be most likely to overcome obstacles? <laughs> what if your idea was like this? So back to the physics. We were tasked with making a translation. What is the mass of an idea? And so we took a first guess, and we said, it's resources. The resources allocated to an idea make up its mass. And if you're an entrepreneur and your time is the only resource this idea has, then that's fine. And if you're a multi-global organization and the resources are vast and many, that's the mass your resources have, your idea has. Velocity translates simply into speed and direction. So we started to say, let's take different scenarios and look at what we feel like when we're in these scenarios. So we have an idea, and we have resources, we have speed, and we have direction. This feels great. We have optimal momentum. Now we're in a situation where we have the resources we need, and lots of things are going on, but the type of result we're getting makes no sense. It's not what we want. It feels a little chaotic. In the third situation, we have resources, and we have direction, but we have no speed. We call that slow growth. Now, I'd like you to think of a time that you've been in situation number two and situation number three, and neither of them has momentum, but they feel different, and the fix is different. If we look at a scenario where we only have speed and direction, any entrepreneurs in the room will recognize that as bootstrapping, and it has a certain feeling. In the world of only single factors, if you only have resources, you have stagnation. This is actually very risky for some larger organizations. They can get stuck. They just become big, they lose their direction, they lose their speed, and they're just stuck. If you only have speed, that's busy work. You're just doing lots of stuff, but there's no value at the end of the day, and there's nothing really, no resources attached to it. What would you guys call this one? I call it good intentions. Your heart's in the right place. <laughs> Not much is being done about it. Finally, we have the world of no momentum. As an example, I'd like to offer TEDx. In a recent interview, they asked Chris Anderson about TEDx, and he said, people would think it's crazy to give our brand away freely to thousands of organizers around the world to do what they want with. But let's see how much momentum this idea built for TED. The direction was clearly set. You all came here today, and the speaker spoke, and the organizers organized, because we were drawn to the TEDx, we are all now resources and mass for the TEDx idea. The talks that were done here add to the speed and the frequency with which talks are generated. And the direction is ideas worth spreading, and we're meeting that. Ideas are like snowflakes. And this momentum theory is just an idea. But I hope, instead of just brushing it off your shoulder, you take it, Combine it with some other ideas you heard here today, and hopefully a few of your own, and make yourself a nice big snowball with lots of momentum. <laughs>